pretty close to being done. So it's exciting, got a lot of sweet stuff. First of all, you may notice that there's a lot more space to work than there has been lately. Um, my sister's apartment is done other than windows, so we started moving all of her stuff out. This is my furniture here. Um, but basically, I finally have an open area to work, which is nice. So, I have started the chassis, uh, which you can see here. Just a big rectangle, um, and I have these corner braces to uh, to keep it square. And I, I'm just reminded again how much of a pain this is because I don't have any of my welding stuff. I don't have like a welder here. Um, so instead I have to drill a million more holes and more bolts and it works pretty well. It's not, well I can't really show you, it's not entirely rigid, uh, which is the biggest shame. I do a lot more work and it takes like 10 times as long and it's not as rigid as welding would be, but that's okay. I bolt it together and then you can take it apart at any moment. So that's that. So, oh, and the, these, um, I don't know when the last time I mentioned this was. But I had been planning on mounting the crank somehow on these wheels. I know I talked about it. Uh, and I figured out a while ago that it's just not going to work. Um, this is like my proposed system of bolting it. But pieces, the pieces would need to hook here and then be able to do a full circle around, which means that half of it would always be running into the um, the axis of the wheel. So. There's no way for that to work. So instead it has to be a crank that's like a straight rod and then wherever you attach it, it juts out, which I have some plans for. Don't know exactly how to do it, but we'll see. Um, oh, and then I figured out how I'm going to attach the, the rigid parts of the legs, the parts that just stay still and aren't rotating around. Um, I wanted to get some kind of L bracket, so I've been taking little pieces of pipe that I have left, or tube I should say, flattening them out. And then what I'm going to do is something like this. Uh, put two pieces together, more similar in size. Um, and bolt like here and here. And then there will be a bolt hole here. And this is where the piece will attach. So it sticks up from the chassis all along. Actually, it will probably be something more like this on the side. So it will be sticking out on the sides. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And I guess what I'm going to do now is flatten out. These are all the pieces that I've cut to make these brackets with some L's and some U's. So I'm going to flatten stuff out. Alright, so the way I'm doing this is pretty simple. I'll just take a piece of the tube that I cut from the leftover scrap and whack it with a really big hammer a bunch of times until it's flat. So. I just whacked myself with the hammer. Kind of good. I think it'll get bandaged up. Uh, Alright, for any fans of the giant robot project, unlike Jamie, I don't live in the woods, so I use real bandages instead of duct tape. Um, but hey, here's a first aid kit now, so I know, back to work. That's all the small ones now, the double long ones. All the L's done. There's 12 of those. 
And there are these longer U pieces as well. Which is really just two L's side by side, but it'll limit the number of bolts that I need to put in. Only two for these instead of four if these were all double L's. So, looking good. I just broke my small drill bit. Uh, kind of latched onto a piece and flew away from me out of the vise and ripped it off. So, you have to find another one. That's always a pain. Uh, I just had a little bit of a realization. This should be pretty good. As you remember, I just showed that rectangular chassis part has a little bit of uh, wiggle in it because you know it's bolted together and bolt holes are bigger than the, the bolts themselves. Um, the way I've been drilling those is the bolts are all quarter inch diameter so I've been using 5 16th drill bit. Um, you're supposed to allow a 16th of an inch to you know make sure that the bolt can slide through and everything lines up. But for pieces that need to be rigid like the chassis it leaves too much literally wiggle room. So, and I'm for these tabs I'm going to have the same problem. They need to stay in one place. So what I've done is the hole that's in the brace, each of these holes, I can make exactly a quarter inch because it's just a one dimensional, well, two dimensional plane and the bolts go directly through those holes. This part, if I made them each exactly um, one quarter inch, I wouldn't be able to get them to line up precisely, especially because I don't have a drill press, I'm just using a hand drill. But the top one I can still do a quarter inch. So do a quarter inch here and then just measure really accurately on the bottom, unlike I have been doing. Um, and use a 5 16 there, so then the extra 16th of an inch will make sure that you know I can line up the super accurate hole with the slightly less accurate hole. So I did that on both of these and this thing isn't moving at all, it has no leeway. Alright, it's the next day. Uh, I made some good progress again. It's kind of frustrating, but um, all the tabs that I need are on. I had to change the plan a little bit. Um, what I was going to do is have each one be like double reinforced. So I'd have one tab coming from this direction, one coming from this direction, then two tabs would line up, and that's where I'd put the bolt. Um, that wasn't really possible because I just I don't have as much precision as I would need. Um, you know, these things are not completely flat or completely square, and getting the two bolt holes in here, sorry, two bolt holes here um, to hold the the brace rigidly, and then have these holes line up just wasn't really going to be possible. But that's okay. I mean, that's part of the process. That's actually what I like about it is the problem solving and stuff. You know, I was thinking about it, if someone had like, someone else had already built one of these exactly like I'm doing it and had plans for it or instructions and they knew it was going to work, then I wouldn't enjoy building that at all. It would be, when I, you know, sitting here and doing this for however many hours I've done it would really suck. But since I'm kind of making up as I go, uh, planning things out myself, problem solving myself, I, I really enjoy it. So yeah, I have to do like hours of drilling and f cutting and whatever and it's a pain, but in the end uh, it's a process that I enjoy. So anyway, I'm getting there. Now the next thing I need to do is get back to work on the legs. I only have three legs left to do and I only need to drill 25 more holes. Um, so it should be done soon. I can show you some of the legs right now, and there's the other one. So right now, it's kind of like a really spread out version of, of what the final machine will look like. If, if you don't know, um, those two triangular parts that are you know pointing towards each other uh, will be connected by a single bolt on the center part. That's the part that rotates. So I don't know if you're familiar with the you know Theo Janssen mechanism or not. Um, I think that's how you actually say his name, not Theo Jansen. Uh, but yeah, so I'm getting there. Three more legs and I'll be done soon. <laughs>